An innocent store clerk loses his life in a senseless act of violence. Now at noon, we are live asking police what clues they found at the scene as the search for a dangerous gunman intensifies. And a South Carolina county is reeling after another law enforcement officer is shot in the line of duty. The violent pattern of behavior that suspect has shown in the past. Plus, parents protesting outside their children's school. Why they think city leaders are putting their children's health at risk. You're watching Eyewitness News. We're live right now at noon. This father was working overnight when he was brutally murdered inside the store that he had worked in for nearly 20 years. We've learned that Ismail Doumba was just days away from celebrating his birthday when he was killed by that gunman. Reporter Gina Esposito has been there outside the Shell gas station on Freedom Drive since early 911 calls came in around 4 o'clock this morning. Gina, emotions running very high still there this afternoon. Oh, it has been an emotional day for friends, family, and co workers. You can see that even the front doors of the Shell gas station are closed this morning as they mourn. And you can see some people even left flowers on the car here for Ismail Dumbia. This is a picture of Dumbia. I'm told that he leaves behind a wife and a teenage son. Friends say he's originally from Africa and continues to send money to family there. Around 3 20 this morning, police say that's when a man walked into the Shell gas station off Freedom. Drive. The store owner tells me the suspect was wearing a black mask when he fired five shots. Police say Dumbia was hit and rushed to the hospital where he later died. Since then, there has been an overwhelming amount of love and support for the store clerk of 17 years. One of his co workers says he's the one who got him the job here a few years ago. He thinks of him as his mentor in life. It's time here to make a better life for him and his family. So, as an older person, that's inspiration for a young dude like me. I definitely love him. I know everybody here loves him too. See a camera outside the store. Police took several pieces of surveillance video in hopes of trying to identify the suspect. They believe the suspect came here this morning trying to rob the place. We know the Enderly neighborhood is holding a vigil tonight for Dumbia. It starts at 6 o'clock here at the gas station. Live in West Charlotte, I'm Gina Esposito, Channel 9 at Witness News. All right, thank you for the very latest on all of that, Gina. It has been a tough 24 hours as gun violence continues to wreak havoc across state lines in York County. What started as a simple traffic stop for a man not wearing a seatbelt led to gunfire and sent a state trooper and that armed suspect to the hospital. South Carolina reporter Greg Suskin has new information right now about the suspect. And Greg, you're going to show us where all of this ended. Right, it looks like the suspect the trooper was chasing just simply ran out of road. Right behind me there where that gate is, that's where India Hook Road ends there at the Lake Wiley Dam. But this chase turned off this direction here, out there behind the sign, down that dirt road toward Camp Canaan. You can look there on the ground and see that gate there all mangled up. That's what the suspect's car hit. And then shortly after that, gunfire started. Now, the Ohio Patrol says the trooper Alex Wise attempted to stop Willie Wright for not wearing a seatbelt last night. They say Wright took off, heading out this direction toward Lake Wiley. Wiley Dam uh, hit that gate and then got out of his car, began firing at Trooper Wise. Trooper Wise fired back. Uh, both men were injured and taken to Piedmont Medical Center, but we're told that Trooper Wise was able to get the suspect uh, in custody before that happened. The Highway Patrol today saying that the body armor that Wise was wearing saved his life in this case. Now, we also learned today that that suspect, Willie Wright, just got out of prison back in August where he served six years for armed robbery and attempted murder. He also has prior arrests for resisting arrest, for gun violations and drug violations as well. And, of course, as a convicted felon, he's not supposed to have a gun at all. Now, he's listed in stable condition today. Uh, as for Trooper Wise, he's making a very speedy recovery. We've also learned, of course, with SLED agents investigating this case, they say there is dash camera video of this. They're taking a look at that right now and expect to file charges very soon. For now, we're live in your county. Greg Suskin, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. All right, thank you so much, Greg, for that. A few hours after being shot, State Trooper Alex Wise took to Facebook to thank his brothers in blue. In this post, Wise talked about the overwhelming support that he's received, adding that it shows him just how blessed he is to have the family and friends that he does. He thanked everyone for their continued prayers. Glad to hear he is all right. Well, it is an absolutely beautiful start to the day out there. Some cooler temperatures, just feeling fantastic. 
Some rain possibly on the way. Let's get a quick preview of that forecast with meteorologist Keith Monday. How are we looking, Keith? Yeah, dry out there to start out the day today. Still warm as well. We're still 84 degrees in Charlotte. But look up north. It's in the 60s and 70s. That cool air is starting to settle in with the north breeze. It'll be with us all day. So we may not warm up that much more than where we are now. About 85, 86 for this afternoon. Getting back quickly into the 70s into your evening. You probably notice a lot of haze out there today. And you can see that on the satellite picture right there. That's actually smoke from wild fires up in Canada. We've been watching this come across the country for over the last week and the series of cold fronts we've seen now have pushed it into the Carolinas. That should start to push a little further south as we head toward this afternoon. Coming up as we head our way through the rest of the week, we're finally looking at rain chances. It's been a while. I'll show you the timing of when I expect those downpour risks to start to return this week. All right, thank you, Keith. Breaking news for you right now in East Charlotte. Parents are being notified this afternoon after a gun was found just outside the campus of Independence High School. The weapon with ammunition was found on school property in a wooded area. No word yet on how exactly it got there. The weapon, we're told, has been handed over to police as they begin their investigation. We'll keep you posted on all of that. Jury selection has begun in the murder trial for a teen accused of killing this college baseball player. Zach Finch was trying to buy a phone for sale on the app Let Go back in 2017, but police say the teens that he met in West Charlotte tried to rob him. Instead, Finch was shot and killed. Josiah Wilson is accused of pulling the trigger. Wilson's attorney has argued in the past that his parents were not there when investigators first arrested and questioned him. He was just 15 years old at the time. Police initially arrested three teens altogether. Charges have been dropped against one. The other, DeMonte McCain, apparently cut a deal and is expected to testify against Wilson. Now, after this case, CMPD created safe zones or public places where buyers and sellers can meet for these online sales. The locations are marked by two red parking spots at every quick trip location and are under 24 hour surveillance. Anchor Blaine Tollison will be inside the courthouse all day today as that jury selection begins. He's going to bring us the very latest at 5 o'clock. New at noon, a 16 year old has just been arrested days after a man was shot in the yard of a North Charlotte home. Reginald Harrison remains in Mecklenburg County Jail this afternoon. Police say he is the one who pulled the trigger last Tuesday in front of a home on Juniper Drive. One man was shot and had to be rushed to the hospital. He is expected to be okay. Harrison will now answer to attempted murder charges in court tomorrow. Fort Mill parents are doing what they can to try and stop a gas station and storage facility from being built next to their children's school. Part of their plan includes protesting. Parents gathered outside Dobie's Bridge Elementary School early this morning. You see them there. They are protesting against a proposed 7-Eleven and storage building that's set to be built just feet away from where the school is. Parents say fumes from the gas station will harm their children in the long run. I mean, we don't want to see our children hurt. We don't want to see teachers hurt. Uh, you know, we just, we just want our kids to feel safe coming to school. And we understand police eventually showed up towards the tail end of that protest, and they asked the parents to leave. Town leaders say the land was already zoned for commercial development years before crews built the school there. We'll let you know what happens. Memorial Stadium, just outside of Uptown, is about to undergo massive upgrades. This is what the new stadium will look like. I don't think that's the picture right there. There we are. There's the picture of what the stadium will look like. Uh, millions of dollars, $35 million, in fact, worth of re renovations will give it a fresh look, all while preserving its history. That was the first picture you saw. The existing stands will have to be demolished for a wider field to accommodate football, lacrosse, and soccer. The field is still going to have the same orientation to the city skyline. It's going to continue to be a horseshoe-shaped stadium. It's still going to use the rock wall that has always been a signature element of the stadium. Yeah, that rock wall, iconic, and it will still be there, as you heard. When Charlotte bid to get a major league soccer team, the plan was to tear down Memorial Stadium pretty much completely and build a brand new soccer stadium. But the city and the county just wouldn't commit to funding that entire project, or at least their portion of it. So the county decided to just renovate it instead. Those historic landmarks commissioners will meet next week and review design plans and recommend approval, we're told. 
A man who's in the U.S. illegally, who continues to be arrested for violent crimes, is back in ICE custody this afternoon. ICE confirmed to Channel 9 a federal fugitive team arrested Luis Pineda and Cheta. Yesterday afternoon in Charlotte, he was taken into custody hours after being released from the Mecklenburg County Jail. ICE tells us this is the second time he's been released from jail without them knowing about it. You may remember Pineda and Cheta was arrested last month after prompting a nine-hour long standoff on Sharon Brook Drive in South Charlotte. That was allegedly after he had kidnapped a woman, strangled her, and threatened to kill her. Immigration agents told us they tried to keep him behind bars after that first attack because they say he is in the country illegally, but because the sheriff's office no longer uses immigration holds, he was released from jail. Of course, Sherry Gary McFadden stopped the 287G partnership with ICE after he took office. That program allows deputies to run an inmate's name through immigration databases. These two men are in jail, accused of carjacking someone, then leading police on a wild chase that ended in a crash in East Charlotte. Police say Jordan Beener and Jordan Williams were wanted in that armed carjacking that happened right there at University Village Apartments. We're told the pair threatened the victim with a gun, stole their keys, and took off in the stolen Jeep. Police spotted the stolen SUV and tried to make a stop, but the suspects just sped away. Hence the chase. They tossed a gun during that chase, but that was later recovered. We would have got hit, you know, because he wasn't but an inch away from us, and we had to swerve over to, you know, duck from it. And he come zoom, and we were like, oh, heck, move. Wow, eyewitness account right there. The Jeep eventually crashed on Harrisburg Road, rolled onto its side, where police arrested both men. Today, we'll get a better sense of what Cabarrus County Schools could do with its controversial realignment plan. The Board of Education will get an update tonight on the Beverly Hills Elementary feasibility study. It would potentially move boundaries and force some students to change schools. This one school is slated to close temporarily until district leaders find out if it can be renovated or rebuilt. Coming up, hurtful words printed on receipts for customers to see. The slurs found at two different Charlotte Smoothie King locations and the swift action that's been taken by those owners. Plus, dangerous water rushing across towns in the Midwest. The failure that's to blame for this terrifying situation. That's next. Weather on WSOC is driven by Toyota of North Charlotte, I-77, exit 23, where big city low prices are just a click away.
Two Charlotte Smoothie King stores have been temporarily shut down after employees apparently used racial slurs on customer receipts. Take a look at this one receipt. We've actually blurred the word for you, but the picture appears to show that order that was placed yesterday at the business on Mount Holly Huntersville Road in Northwest Charlotte. We spoke to the man who got the receipt, Calvin Caldwell. He says he was shocked when he saw it, but didn't say anything at first. I thought it was very disrespectful. I thought it was very rude. I mean, you know, just especially like if I'm a paying customer and like I'm a loyal customer because I come to Smoothie King often. I just felt like it was just really in bad taste. I feel like it was, I mean, it was just completely inappropriate to even to use that kind of language. And to make matters worse, a second customer complained about the Smoothie King store on Davis Lake Parkway in North Charlotte. That person, who is Korean, said the receipt listed his name as Jackie Chan. He said he left angry and posted his receipt and anger online. Smoothie King CEO Wan Kim released a statement saying his team will continue to look into the incidents and fire anyone involved. He also publicly apologized. Those two stores will remain closed until workers get sensitivities training, as well, we're told. Now, heavy rains have caused levees to break along the Mississippi and Arkansas rivers, putting thousands of homes in those areas in danger. In Arkansas this afternoon, hundreds of roads and homes are underwater. Look at some of these images. It took about a week for those waters to actually rise and reach that level, kind of a slow motion disaster. Now, people who live in homes like this are doing what they can to keep more water from seeping inside. We don't have flood insurance. Um, and we're just trying to keep it out of the house. Federal help is being promised, but cannot be delivered until some of those waters recede in the coming weeks. Here in the Carolinas, we're dealing with the opposite problem. South Carolina's state drought committee will meet this week to discuss dry conditions here on the ground. Many parts of the state in North Carolina saw historic high temperatures and very little measurable rain in parts of May. Here in Charlotte, we haven't seen rain in quite a while either, at least any significant amounts in most neighborhoods. Meteorologist Keith Monday joins us now with that full forecast. Uh, we're expecting something later this week, Keith. Later this week, that streak should finally end. I mean, today will likely be and will be day 23 in a row with no measurable rain in Charlotte. We had those thunderstorms last week on Friday up north. Didn't make it here to most of the city, so the good majority of folks didn't see a thing. We're at 84 in Charlotte now, 85 in Gastonia, but we're just getting to 80 up north. That cooler air is starting to filter in, and we'll see more of a north breeze as the day goes on. So it should be relatively comfortable out there. We'll keep the mid 80s, maybe a few upper 80s here or there, but humidity is dry as can be. So that looks great. No rain to worry about. You can get the yard work done today with not breaking too much of a sweat. And tonight, getting that grilling forecast going, we'll fall back quickly in the low 80s. And with that low humidity, it feels great for outdoor plans for tonight. We're eventually going to fall down to the low to mid 50s tonight. Look at this. Overnight lows will be in the lower 40s. In the mountains. We may even find a few spots up there in the upper 30s tomorrow morning. So, nice change coming in for the short term. We'll keep it the mid 80s tomorrow. Another gorgeous day. Low humidity. Hopefully, a little less of that haze that we saw throughout the day today. As we progress into Wednesday, we're going to watch for dying thunderstorms tomorrow night into Wednesday morning. Maybe working into the mountains early. Low chance of rain to start the day Wednesday. But into Wednesday afternoon, scattered downpours fire up. Not widespread rains for everybody, but this is the beginning of several rain chances coming our way starting Wednesday, maybe a little drop in that chance Thursday, a little hotter on Thursday. But the Friday and the weekend still looks like widely scattered thunderstorms are likely for the first time in about a month. We're going to finally have solid chances for rain coming in. And severe weather threats also look to be low, other than the risk for some heavy rainfall. So, our seven day forecast no heat wave this week, just near 90 for a couple days as the week rolls on. But in the short term, it's beautiful today and tomorrow. Need the umbrellas for the rest of the week thereafter, so it could have a pretty good impact on weekend plans. But we need the rain, so such kind of grin and bear it with the outdoor activities this weekend. Today and tomorrow, though, perfect opportunity to get out and, and enjoy it. Beautiful. Thanks, Keith. Coming up, mourners in Virginia grasping for an answer days after another mass shooting. Next, why one survivor said he didn't think anything of it when he saw the accused shooter holding a gun.
Flags will fly at half staff today in North Carolina. The governor issued that order yesterday in honor of the victims of the mass shooting in Virginia Beach. Flags will remain lowered until sunset tomorrow as the state joins the nation in mourning the 12 lives lost. Now, this afternoon, investigators in Virginia are digging into a possible motive for Friday's shooting. Police say the city engineer who opened fire at the municipal building was not disgruntled. He sent a resignation email to his boss the day of the shooting. Workers inside the building say an active shooter drill had been scheduled for the next morning, creating some confusion when they saw a gun. We passed by a gentleman that was carrying a gun in his hand, but it looked so theatrical because of the extended magazine and the suppressor that was on the end of it. I, he never looked at me. I mean, he glanced at me, but he never raised the gun at me to shoot me. I thought he was playing the part of an active shooter for our drill. Wow. Over the weekend, the gunman's family posted a handwritten note on their front door saying their thoughts and prayers are with those who lost their lives. We'll be right back. Closed captioning is brought to you by Bojangles Famous Chicken and Biscuits. It's bow time. Feeling great out there right now. Not bad, yeah. It's warm, but it's not humid. So, I mean, it feels tolerable out there this afternoon with the mid 80s, plenty of sunshine. We just have a haze out there, so a little hazy from time to time, but all in all, not bad. Now, we'll hold on to this quiet weather pattern for now, but rain chances are finally starting to roll back in. So, today at 5, Steve's going to have the outlook for not only when we can start talking about these summer rain coming in, but how those chances will probably get even better as we head toward the weekend. Sounds good. A lot of developing news that we're following all afternoon. Be sure to join the team back here at 5 o'clock. Thanks so much for joining us this midday. Have a great afternoon. WSOC TV is a Cox Media Group station.